and I don't understand why Jarrah would think that calcium was the new mineral discovered during the Smart One impact. First off, calcium is a common element, not a mineral, found in moon rocks. In fact, Jarrah mentions the existence of calcium in lunar rock twice in his video series. First, when he reads from the National Geographic Picture Atlas of our universe, published in 1980, Maybe the moon and the earth were formed at the same time, out of the same gas and dust. The same elements are found on both. Calcium, aluminium, titanium, magnesium, silicon, oxygen, iron, but in far different proportions. And again, when he reads from Michael Davidson's paper, Moon Rock Center of the Microscope, which first appeared in the July 1993 edition of Microscopy and Analysis. Mere basalts are volcanic lavas generally rich in iron and titanium oxide minerals that formed when molten rock from the interior of the moon surfaced and cooled. Chemically, the rock is about 42% silicon dioxide, 22% ferrous oxide, with the rest being mainly magnesium, calcium, and aluminium oxides. And now we are to believe that calcium was newly discovered by Smart One in 2006. How? This is the reason why I would never be a good conspiracy theorist. I don't think I have the mental capacity to keep all the conflicting stories straight and know which one to apply in any given situation. It's much simpler to stick with the facts. That way you only have to remember one story, and it always applies. I do not claim that calcium is a mineral, and I do not claim that calcium was newly discovered on the moon in 2006. Hell, since I was a child, I've always known that there's calcium in milk that one can buy at the grocery store. All I said was that Smart One was able to verify the calcium content on the lunar surface where the Soviet samples were retrieved. One would think that if the chemistry of the Russian and American samples were identical, as Phil Plate claimed, the calcium detected from orbit by Smart One would be the same for all sample return missions, not just the Russian missions. That's all that was said. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Phil Webb is outright lying to his audiences. And this mother of all straw men is one of the main reasons I know he is lying to his audiences. Webb knew very well what I used this ESA article for. It wasn't to identify lunar minerals, it was to discuss the chemistry of the Russian samples. Webb knew this. He had to have known what I was talking about. He used clips that came before and after my specification of what I cited the article for. Not only did he use these clips that came before and after, he cut and spliced them together with a transition in an attempt to try and hide his omission of my clarifier. Here's the segment as it appeared in Webb's video. And there you have it. As of Smart One's controlled impact, a mismatch has been found between actual moon rocks and the rocks supposedly collected during lunar EVA. The probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moon walks. Such a damning discovery that only the Australian Broadcasting Corporation picked up on this while all other news networks ignored it. Isn't it obvious why? Like Jera, I find it interesting that the only reference will... Now here it is, as originally released. And there you have it. As of Smart One's controlled impact, a mismatch has been found between actual moon rocks and the rocks supposedly collected during lunar EVA. The probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. This means that the Soviet samples must also be different, as their chemical structure matched up with the Apollo samples. Or perhaps they didn't. On ESA's website, we are told... They found that the calcium detected from orbit was in agreement to that found by Luna 24 on the surface of Mir Crisium. As Smart One flew on, it swept DCIXS over the nearby Lunar Highland regions. Calcium showed up here too, which was a surprise until the scientists looked at the data from another Russian moon mission, Luna 20. That lander had also found calcium back in the 1970s. So it seems, the actual moon rocks are different to the Apollo samples, but not the Soviet samples. Evidently, 
either the Russian moon rocks were never identical to their American counterparts in the first place, or ESA is covering for Mother Russia and forgot to cover for NASA. By punching a 10 metre hole in the moon's surface, the probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. Such a damning discovery that only the Australian Broadcasting Corporation picked up on this while all other news networks ignored it. Isn't it obvious why? You can see from this that Webb deliberately chopped out my clear specification of my use of this ESA article, and then he pretended I used it to claim calcium was a newly discovered lunar mineral when I did no such thing. That's not critiquing someone's videos, that's lying. And whilst we're on the subject of his lies, let's have a look at what he claims are my conflicting stories. Hmm, NASA's moon rocks contain water. Yep, that's what I said. NASA's moon rocks don't contain water. Uh, would that image you're showing by any chance be this email by YouTube user MrCraig41, a claim that I disproved by showing that there is indeed water in those rocks? Apparently so. Going after the wrong guy again, eh, Phil? So, nope, no self-conflicting stories here. NASA's moon rocks are the same as Earth rocks. NASA's moon rocks are the same as common meteorites. News flash for your web. Not all non-lunar meteorites are the same as the chondrites you exploit. Eucrites being a good example. And I've shown repeatedly how eucrites, Apollo samples, and terrestrial basalts have the same elemental proportions and mineralogy as one another. So, nope, no self-conflicting stories here either. NASA's moon rocks contain calcium. NASA's moon rocks don't contain calcium? As shown just moments ago, I do not claim that calcium was newly discovered to exist on the moon by Smart One. You made that up as a straw man. So, I can emphatically say, no self-conflicting stories here. I'm quite capable of keeping my stories straight. And yet he claims he prefers to stick to the facts? I doubt Webb even knows the definition of the term, considering the facts he muddied, omitted, denied, and misrepresented throughout his entire series on moon rocks. Fact number one. The Apollo samples have water contents that are commensurate to their terrestrial cousins. Fact number two. Despite claims to the contrary by some of the guys studying these rocks, NASA for years dismissed this water as terrestrial contamination. That is, until it was found in the lunar spherules, prompting NASA followers to compare apples to oranges by exploiting the recent Chandrayaan-1, Deep Impact and Cassini data. Fact number three. The water in the Apollo samples ranges between 0.1 to 0.6% by weight. The only place on the moon where you can get water in comparable quantities is in the cooler and in some cases permanently shadowed polar regions. The water here maximizes at 0.3% by weight. Water has been detected outside the polar regions and at latitudes above 10 degrees north, but it is so low that it doesn't even register in the Chandrian 1 M3 data and is by no means comparable to the Apollo samples. In these equatorial regions, about 10 parts per million of water collects on the surface due to interactions with the solar wind. This water then vaporizes due to the high temperatures and the vacuum of space. Fact number four. There can be no water in comparable proportions in the equatorial regions of the moon. If for no other reason, then it would have all been vaporized during the giant impact and any water deposited on the surface by comets or solar wind would have vaporized in the vacuum of space, which drastically lowers the boiling point of water. Fact number five. The Apollo samples have chemical compositions and oxygen isotope ratios and mineralogy virtually identical to rocks from the Earth's mantle. Fact number six. Of the six minerals that Webb flat out denies are in the Apollo samples, quartz, calcite, magnetite, mica, amphiboles, and pyrite, four of them are common to sedimentary rocks, not igneous rocks like the Apollo samples and terrestrial basalts. Meaning, although these minerals have been found in the Apollo rocks, geologists wouldn't necessarily expect to find them in such samples, nor would the absence of them be any real surprise. And ironically enough, 
Amphibole minerals are believed to be plentiful in the lunar mantle due to their similar compositions to high titanium Apollo samples. Fact number 7. There is ferric iron in the Apollo rocks, and it is in comparable concentrations to that of earth rocks that have undergone heat treatment in a vacuum chamber. The only way that could get in is if these rocks were exposed to the atmosphere. The existence of ferric iron oxides in the Apollo samples is another thing Webb flat out denies. Fact number 8. The only characteristics of moon rocks that are uncommon to earth rocks is their exposure to radiation and exposure ages, which has also been found in meteorites on Earth. Fact number 9. Solar wind particles penetrate a few millimetres into the rock, as stated by Webb's own source. This is 3,000 times the depth that Webb claims they can penetrate. Fact number 10. Fusion crust is generally only less than one millimetre thick, and thus chipping it away would not remove a large portion of the solar wind-induced isotopes, which Webb's own source indicates must exist a few millimetres under the rock's surface. Fact number 11. Radiation particles can be added using particle accelerators, and zap pits can be added using multi-stage gas guns. Fact number 12. Meteorites such as eucrites and howardites have the radiation characteristics that are absent in terrestrial rocks. And coincidentally, they also have similar mineral and chemical compositions to the Apollo samples. And as evidenced by eucrite DAG-872, they can also have the same oxygen isotope ratios. Fact number 13. So similar are these two groups of rock that there have been cases of mistaken identities. DAG-872 and NWA-6072 were both originally thought to be lunar meteorites before they were officially recognised as eucrites. Meanwhile, the official lunar meteorite Elephant Maureen 87521 was originally recognised as a eucrite due to its mineralogy and chemistry. Fact number 14. Both rock types, used as ingredients for NASA's Apollo samples, have similar ages. Fact number 15. For study purposes, NASA usually sends out 10 milligram sized pieces of rock that were chipped off from larger specimens. The hammer and chisel used in this process is no different to what the ceramist would have used to chip away the fusion crusts of meteorites. And so no scientist would have been able to tell whether the traces of these tools and their markings got there via chipping off the fusion crust or by chipping off the subsample for analysis. Fact number 16. The lunar spherules, high silica glasses, and some creep rocks have the same chemical composition as tektites, which has led some scientists, like John O'Keefe, to believe tektites are of lunar origin. Fact number 17. The Soviet samples are different to the Apollo samples. And Webb tried to use me as a fall guy for Phil Plate's erroneous claim to the contrary. Among these differences is the fact that the Apollo rocks have ferric iron in them, whereas the Soviet rocks do not. Fact number 18. We have eight separate lunar meteorites that have significant differences in chemical composition to the Apollo samples. One of these meteorites contains an exclusive mineral common to the moon, but totally absent in the Apollo samples. Fact number 19. The mineral absent in question, hapkite, is the byproduct of micrometeoroid impact with the lunar surface. By any definition, it should by all means be prevalent in the samples we have. Fact number 20. Smart One was able to verify the chemistry of the Russian lunar samples, but found a mineral mismatch between actual moon rocks and the Apollo samples. By punching a 10 metre hole in the moon's surface, the probe has uncovered minerals different to the rocks gathered on the surface during moonwalks. The key is the chemical signatures in the dust and debris thrown up by the collision. Many sources indicate that the lunar geology should be the same throughout, including Randy Korotev's website, which Webb parroted nearly word for word, yet failed to reveal this section. What does all this tell you? The Apollo moon rocks are faked. 
not that this matters to Webb and his propagandist buddies. You can debunk their claim six ways to Sunday, and they'll just poison the well by dismissing it as whining. Well, I think it's fair to say, I've given them all something to whine about.